YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Atomo here. We are back in the Shogun 2 campaign. We're actually rather close to capturing the Shogun. Uh, the Kyoto is right here, and I have multiple armies converging on it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and move up reinforcements to this point. It's not a particularly strong army, but it brings a lot of firearms with it and some extra katana samurai, so it will help get the job done. I have an army here in the north as well. I've kind of created a buffer zone here at uh, Tamba, where I'm able to kind of keep it in check at the moment. And then we've got um, Tajima kind of just in check at the moment as well. Let's check my army here. There is no more replenishing going on. I mean, I should be able to push forward and capture Wasa uh, Wakasa. If I was able to capture Wakasa, I'd be able to approach Kyoto from around the backside here, too, and get multiple armies in in order to get it. So I, we may be able to just take a shot at Kyoto and possibly win in the game. I've got another army loaded up and ready to head to Shikoku. I have a fleet that's being repaired. I'm guarding all of the, uh, like, this kind of inner sea area here, keeping it all well guarded um, from enemies. And then all my trade ports are guarded. Still making some income. Obviously, we lost a bunch of our income as we recruited more Nanban ships. And more armies, that is kind of an understandable, you know, side effect um, of what's going on. I think I'm going to take this missionary and I'm going to push in. Uh, let's see if we get lucky and we can get rid of these uh, Oda Shogun and Ninja here. These should be low tier characters because I've been actively killing their characters. And I lost my best monk, unfortunately. I've had to recruit a new one to try and work in its stead. So I didn't succeed at either one of those shots, but, you know, whatever. We tried. It is time for me to end a turn. And as I go to end a turn, I will make sure to get to some of your comments from the last episode, too. And I appreciate all of you who have been following this and uh, watching for all this time. I've very much enjoyed making this campaign, and I enjoy responding to your comments as we go through it. Um, and the first comment, as I end this turn, is going to be coming from our very own Warner95, who very much appreciates all this gunplay. He says, Watching matchlock units being used in siege defense battles always makes my dopamine level skyrocket. I think we just, yeah, lost one of our ninja. And... Second one was safe. See what happens here at the Oda. They're gonna do some raiding, of course. What the AI does when it doesn't know what to do. Default mode is just raiding. Um, so thank you, Warner. Appreciate uh, all the ideas and um, uh, the support in modding on my um, Discord. So we do have a naval battle here. Uh, the only threat to me is this firebomb Kabaya. The other ships are completely useless. There's really nothing to see here. I'm going to kill the firebomb Kabaya and then just watch the other ships fail. The AI could board me and potentially win a melee fight. But what's difficult for them is once they come within matchlock range, they start to take a lot of damage. So, uh, anyway, the AI just doesn't know how to use their ships. Maybe this is something we could demonstrate with another player at some point. We could uh, practice going after Nanban ships. Anyway, let's fight this one. All right, we were easily able to um, dif dispatch the enemy fleet there. As I had mentioned, it worked exactly as I thought. I sunk the firebomb Kabaya, and then that was pretty much it. <laughs> it's game over. Uh, looks like we had a missionary increase in rank, which is great. Enemy raid at Setsu. Enemy raid at Ewa. Suspicious death. Invasion force lands. Let's see where that's at. Okay, this is on... The way the map's oriented, it's on the north side of my island. Um, not a very large invasion force by any means. But enough to threaten um, any of these kind of weak garrisons around here. So I'm going to do a little recruiting in the vicinity. I've actually got a small army here that I could march out to kind of help as well. And then we've got a small one here and here. So I will try and punch these guys that direction. There we go. All right. So just a few troops behind enemy lines. Um, not a huge deal for me here. I'm going to go ahead and load up this uh, army. And start transporting it to Shikoku. I'm going to leave these extra couple of ships to help this fleet. And that will also give me longer travel distance um, with this uh, Nanban ship. So I'm going to drop off army right here at EO. And if I can 
take out this city, I think it'll end up destroying that faction. Because I believe it's their only settlement um, that'll allow me to put further pressure here. We did have a Harakayama army somehow, I guess it was maybe routed up here. It came back and did some raiding, which is a little bit irritating, but not going to really cause me much financial damage. Uh, this army is in good shape, ready to push forward against the Harakayama. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't serve much purpose, but I, I think we should show the execution um, of Kojima Yukihide. And it should be at the hands of the Ter uh, Terasos for sure. Or maybe a Donderbus cap, I don't know. We'll, we'll see who gets the honor. Well, I was going to show his execution, but... Um, it was a shameful display. I don't, I don't think my shameful display thing is working properly right now either. But yeah, so I, I've told you all that I will click attack orders, like a ranged attack order. And there was no line of sight issue. It was open ground, uh, a unit on horseback, which is even easier to see over open ground. Not a single one of my Tersos fired a shot. The general's unit was able to close the distance, get into melee. Of course, it died in melee against my Tersos because they're quite good. But I'm just saying that this is so frustrating. And, like, this game is so random with matchlocks. You saw in the last episode how good they can be when they actually shoot. And then, like, right here, I couldn't even get a single shot off at a cavalry unit on an open field. I, I don't get it. This game has some very strange firing behavior from matchlock units which make it rather unpredictable. So I was going to show something there, but decided not to because I wanted it to be a big gun line execution, and it was not, so whatever. <laughs> so this should hopefully be the end of the Harakayama because we're going to capture their final castle. These will be fewer and fewer um, factions who are at war with me. So here we go. General increases in rank. We're going to occupy... And then, like I said, it, uh, that should be... Yep, clan destroyed. So there they go. They are gone. Let's repair the castle. We've already got a merchant guild. Let's tear down the monastery. And instead, build a church, or a chapel. To start calming the populace a little. Uh, next turn, we'll be able to attack Eo. And then up here, um, my forces are definitely ready to converge on Tokyo... So let's do so. I'm going to move up slowly, kind of see what is outside of Kyoto. Nothing outside, but there is a garrison inside. Going to lay siege. And I'm going to maintain the siege. And let's move up additional troops. To the reinforcement position. <clears throat> and uh, honestly, we're not going to give the Oda any time to do anything about this. I'm going to assault right now. Um, we're going to attack the Oda Shogun. If they don't have a leader present, which I believe will hurt them a pretty fair deal. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and attack Kyoto now. And use my reinforcements and superior numbers here. So, I am going to... Um, control the large army. And this, obviously, I will show you. And Kyoto is a rather large settlement, uh, well defended by arrow towers. I expect to take some casualties in the process, but with eight katana samurai, two nagi, eight uh, terasos, and 12 total gun units, feeling like we're going to do just fine as we uh, go through this. So let's go ahead and assault Kyoto. All right, outside the walls of Kyoto, my forces have joined up and are ready for a joint assault. Um, I've got all of my bows moving in first um, to draw enemy bow fire and begin to soften up enemy defenses hopefully a little bit. Though I don't expect um, a great success with this. I've only got five bows, and they are firing into just as many bows, some of which are higher quality even. We're up here on the wall. You can see some bow samurai there and there. Move on over. More bow samurai. I mean, there is a large number of bow samurai. And then there's some bow ashigaru. More bow ashigaru. All the way down through here. So there are a large number of bow units. And then right behind them, the unit of bow warrior monks even. So I mean, there is a significant missile threat here. And I expect that I will take heavy casualties in the missile department. But my objective is move in with the bows, draw their fire, and then begin moving forward my two different matchlock lines. 
And I'm going to try and get the matchlocks in closer while the bows begin the skirmishing, and then let my matchlocks deal some heavy damage. Uh, but again, I'll probably take quite a bit of damage in return, too. There are a lot of enemies on the walls. So you can see here, my matchlock lines moving through. This includes imported matchlock Ashigaru. There's four of them. And then eight units of Portuguese Tersos. So, again, the heavy bow fire continues as my troops start wading through the shallow water. So slow our troops down. Definitely not ideal conditions to be firing from, but do what we can. Uh, the unit on the far flank here is taking some pretty rough damage under heavy fire. One of my Portuguese Tersos units. A lot of bow fire coming from that flank. So my units are finally into position, and despite having used my bows as a distraction, it was not hyper successful. So I do now have some units in range, and uh, they'll begin to fire back. So, see here, I've got multiple gun units now in range that start returning some fire to the enemy. And over here, I set up in a double line. I've got some Terrasos in the back, and then more Terrasos and an Ashigaru in the front. They'll come into close range and fire, whereas my other ones are fired from slightly further back. But on this flank, I will have quite a bit of success against the enemy bows, despite initially taking a lot of damage, because these are just bow Ashigaru, and they don't cause as much damage to me in return. Whereas over here, where there was more bow samurai, despite getting some work done, these bow samurai are uh, really working my troops over. <laughs> despite the superior ranged firepower here, I am just having a lot less success on this flank in general. And I'm having to retreat some of my units, or will have to, over time. But, like I said, this flank, we're clearing it out real quick. I'm getting some beautiful volleys here. And getting massive damage done, so... Really lovely fight here to start things off with. Big cloud of smoke. And as the skirmishers start to do their job and clear things out, I will begin to bring in the melee component. You can see over here I've nearly lost all of my matchlocks. There were fewer matchlocks on this side matched up against superior bow forces on the wall, but... Again, all of this has provided, at least if nothing else, a little bit of weakening and some ammo usage. And when my uh, melee infantry starts to work its way in, it will have no doubt um, helped clear things out considerably. Is this bow warrior monk not firing? If so, they're crazy. I don't think they're firing. This bow warrior monk could be doing tremendous damage, and instead it's doing a whole lot of nothing. Look at that one bow samurai there. It had 142 kills. 147. 48 on that Garrison Ashigaru. 131. I mean, this... I don't know what's up with this bow monk. They are stark raving mad for not firing at me. So, anyway, here comes... Uh, I've got Nagi Samurai and uh, Katana Samurai. And then a bunch more Katana Samurai on this flank. So, we have a lot of Katana. And most of them are with improved armor. Which will make the bow fire um, less effective against them than a standard unit. So you can see that uh, wearing down the bows was definitely worth it. I'm under a lot less fire as we approach now. And speaking of fire, my katana samurai are going to be bringing up the torches to burn down their gatehouses and their archery tower. So I will be taking control of the walls here. Here comes the first line of torches for burning down the gate. And it catches fire quickly. And I'm going to start throwing torches at the other gate. And then I'm going to put some torches onto this tower as well. Start burning down the defenses. And then I've got troops scaling the wall. So my first troops have come over the walls into the streets of Kyoto. Still no attack from this Poe Warrior Monk. A bit surprised at what in the world it's doing. It could have backed up and done tons of damage, but instead it looks like it may end up in melee with me. Are they even going to fire? Okay, they finally took a shot. Got a few kills. But now they've been engaged in melee as well by one of my tough-as-nails katana samurai. Though they hit it with a whistling arrow, which was probably a good idea. It does a little bit of demoralization. Here comes a Yari samurai charging in. Over here will be one of the tougher fights as my katana samurai fight through a bow samurai. They're being shot by others who are in the keep of this fortress. So their tower is out. Their gatehouses are burned. And you can see more of my troops beginning to flood into um, the lower levels of the citadel. Here comes a Yari cavalry aiming to charge some of my katana. It'll be pretty successful on the charge. Yari cavalry do very nicely on the charge, but they'll get chewed apart in prolonged melee. And then you can see these Yari samurai that engaged me again, fighting pretty well, but now they're going to be outflanked. 
And then my Nagi Samurai over here, happy to take on some Yari Sam. It's no problem. These Nagi Samurai are actually probably the best melee combatants in my army. You would think it would be the Katana Samurai, but I'm actually pretty certain that it's these Nagi Sam in terms of just overall toughness and ability to stand in any melee fight and win. A glorious victory so you can see the towers see burning. I'll let you get some beautiful looks as Kyoto begins to fall. I'm going to go ahead and move my Tersos in. I've moved my General up into stand and fight. Help buff these units. But uh, like I said, there's still a pretty significant force up here in the keep. There's some uh, Bo Ashigaru garrison, some Bo Samurai who have made it up there. They still have a, a Yari Ashigaru here, a Firebomb Thrower. Uh, Yari Sam over here, Samurai Retainers. There's an Anabushi heroine, which I, yeah, it's coming here. No, I thought the Anabushi, it may have already died right here. Yeah, I believe the Anabushi heroine, yeah, fought and died here. I can see the remnants of it. So there was an Anabushi heroine. <laughs> they were not heroic enough to win the fight, but they did their duty and they fought and they lived up to the code of Bushido. So you can see some uh, Yori Ashigaru here trying to hold out against my Katana Samurai. This is a fight that they do not belong in and most assuredly will not win. And then those Bow Samurai decided to come back out of the Citadel as well. And uh, they will face some stiff consequences, paying with their life for such a mistake. So those last defenders trying to keep me out of the... Uh, the victory point, it won't work. So I've got Terasos inside. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remount my general and pull him inside as well. And I'm going to pull my cavalry in eventually too, just in case it's needed. But I'm going to go ahead and start scaling uh, the main keep. These katana samurai here will be in pretty rough shape. They're going to have to fight the Boashigaru garrison. There are other troops up here, like firebomb throwers, stuff to be careful of. Um, we're going to burn down this gate as well. So when I get troops in a position, we'll start hucking torches in there. And burn it down. There's a Yari Samurai that was engaging me on the flank. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these extra katana into the melee. I'll put these guys down. And then over here, um, this Samurai Retainer was approaching, as was this Katana Samurai. So I'm going to engage the Katana Samurai. And I'm going to use my Portuguese Tersos to put some shots uh, on the Samurai Retainer and the Katana Samurai. Make sure my general stays nice and safe here. So I've clicked the attack orders. The Tersos, plenty of room to fire here. They'll execute their fire by rank drill. Firing up to three ranks deep. And the firebomb throwers initially get a few kills on me. And I'm not going to be having any more of that. So my Nagi Samurai are going to come give them a face full of pole sword. Tell them where they can stuff their firebombs. Can you even imagine, like, trying to fight, like, as an Ashigaru with a katana sidearm, trying to fight a, you know, lifetime-trained samurai armed with a long pole sword? I mean, that would just be absolutely terrifying. As you know, he can keep you at range. One wrong move, and you're getting sliced by a big, massive pole sword. We have captured their tower, my lord. So anyway, my guy's able to easily fight through the firebomb throwers. Uh, the bigger fight over here is going to be this... Um, Yoritomo's Yabasume, or Yabasome Cavalry, whatever it is, Yabus, Yabusame Cavalry. <laughs> it's a, it's the Hero Bow Cavalry, and it's going to be a decent melee combatant. I wouldn't say great, but decent. They have really good um, morale, and I'm also trying to beat down a Samurai Retainer over here at the same time. So I do have my Nagi Sam free, though. They can come attack this Bow Cavalry, which would do its damage much better from long range. It has 200 range. This, their numbers aren't really high either. These hero units, uh, I mean, some of them are fun in campaign, but they were never, like, really spectacular. Their low numbers, uh, to me, makes them not really worth trying to maintain. Some of the melee ones are okay, but even them, again, low numbers get put up against missile units, and they just end up being a mess. Like, it's it's not what you want. But here we go. My Nagi Sam going to get to cut down a high-value target. Those are their favorite targets. But again, you can see the skill. These bow cavalry stay alive a lot longer than any other bow cavalry would in a melee up against some heavily armored anti-cavalry capable troops here. So I've got troops moving in, and we're going to take over the capture point. And these last few bow cavalrymen are kind of running away, hoping to fight. I'm going to send these katana samurai over here to capture the archery tower. 
and my Nagi Samurai are going for the, the last stand here. There's five hero bow cavalry making their stand. There just went two of them. The men are fatigued, my lord, and some must rest. And there goes a third, fourth, and fifth. So the defenders fail, and the beginning of the Atobo, Atomo Shogunate is here. All right, folks, we did it. We powered our way right into Kyoto. I didn't do a whole lot to try and minimize casualties. I just went for it and used, you know, brute strength uh, to overcome here. And I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, not surprised my Naginata Samurai were leading the way. As this offensive mode for the Tersos is a little more difficult for them to pull off, though you can see a couple of their units did do very well, where they weren't the target of bow fire and they got time to shoot up into the garrison. They did just fine. Uh, we did not lose any units, so we won't have to do any retraining. Um, and my own daimyo was the one to uh, make the capture, which to me uh, makes it all the more appropriate here. So we are going to occupy Kyoto. And it says, a great prize indeed. Kyoto is under our control. We must hold it for a year in order to claim the shogunate. So now we must hold. Um, there is a temple complex here that we do not want. So I will tear that down. We have a Sword Master School, uh, Master Dojo, Bow Master Dojo, Yari Master Dojo. We have all these master things. Um, I think I'll just probably build like a Warhorse stable here instead, just, just for the sake of. And there's a Confucian Academy here as well. Um, so good capture. Uh, we have it under control. There's really nowhere for the Oda to go and really not a whole lot of way for him to push back too effectively against us because I've got this army which can now be transferred into the, the main island here. And um, yeah, they, the, uh, in it, our enemies are in very bad shape here. Like there is very little they're going to be able to do to resist what's happening to them. Let's see if we can get rid of this Matsuke who came in. Um, we managed to convert him. We lost, I think, a ninja in this process. Um, yeah, we lost a ninja. I've recruited another one there. This province is pretty unhappy. Let's hire another missionary. All right, so we're going to be at full capacity there. Uh, I'm just... If Setsu does a little rebellion, it shouldn't be the end of the world. I'm going to actually move this... Uh, actually, I'm not going to move this... Yeah, I am going to move this army back this way so that they would have to go through it in order to get to Setsu, which will... Probably discourage that from happening. I don't know if this is a worthwhile effort or not, but I'll go ahead and repair that farm. I don't really have much money left. So there's going to be limited capability for me to do much against these enemy characters, but I'll try. Taking away a turn from them um, potentially saves us from losing an agent and is thus worth it. Oh, we failed both times. All right. So, good turn. Kyoto under our control. Chikoku is soon to be completely in, under our control. We had a convalesced agent back here. It's actually a pretty high-powered ninja, so let's get him moving back where he belongs. Our Nanban ship made the drop-off here. We can go use it for uh, something else after this. I'm going to get to a couple more comments from you all as we end this turn and begin our four-turn run to uh, claim... The Shogunate here. Uh, Heathen Wizard says, I suggest you start sending your priest farther afield to incite more revolts. Uh, it'll keep them on the back foot and pressure off your front. Yeah, you can absolutely do this. And he is not wrong. Not at all. Um, you can send those agents forward and they will get quite a bit done. Um, in fact, I mean, you can bring the whole island, like all of Japan, to its knees just on that alone. Um, quite effectively. In fact, uh, look at this. The uh, Takeda feeling, like, obligated to cut. Oh, they have warrior nuns. How cool. Sweet. Warrior nuns were a really fun unit. Um, so they got warrior nuns. They're going to attack me in Kyoto. I mean, it's a bold move there, Cotton. I don't think it's going to work. Anyway, I'll fight this one, but let me get uh, finish that comment. Yeah, he's right. You can send him forward. You can bring all of Japan to its knees with just the missionaries alone if you're trying to do this the most efficient. Absolutely. I haven't pushed that as much, and I've been using my missionaries to help do a lot of converting and to help do character conversions as well as, you know, provincial conversions. However, he's not wrong in the sense that you can send them forward and use them much more offensively, and it is a pretty good strategy. In any case, let's get started here. 
All right, the ill-conceived Takeda attempt to retake Kyoto is underway. They've chosen the middle of a thunderstorm, which I guess may help them some for my match locks, but I mean, tell that to these bow samurai. Didn't really go very well for them. These firebomb throwers got a couple of tosses off before being uh, very quickly executed. So I took my cavalry out to come attack these weaker units here, and it was successful. Meanwhile, the Takeda are sending in their main forces uh, on this, I'm going to call it the east side of the castle, according to the radar map here. And then um, we're going to have the generals uh, sitting out here on what looks like the north side of the castle. Now, I have positioned my uh, Portuguese Tersos accordingly, and good luck getting through these guys. Uh, they fight to the death in the keep, and they have... You know, a lot of morale support. This is going to be a very ugly fight for the Takeda. A very ugly fight. I have one back here in the back in case the generals decide to make a climb for it. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward because there's not much to see on the in-between here. I'm just kind of resting my cavalry that went outside the gates um, as I need to uh, you know, get them good and rested up. I don't want them to end up in a melee. Um, we're having to try and run away from those enemy the general enemy units without being at full stamina. And uh, at this point, um, the enemy have some bow samurai that are coming within range. They should have stopped and started shooting from a distance. But instead, they moved up, and they are going to be met with a fury of matchlock volleys. And I will be using the rapid reload ability for my Portuguese Terrasos on this wall. And you can see I've got them spread out wide, and I'm getting a huge number of shots into our enemies. And they will be doing very little damage to me in return, all the while taking massive casualties. You can see that these units being absolutely cut down. This Katana Samurai unit. I love the red color of the Takeda, I have to say. It really is probably one of the coolest looking colors in that Samurai armor. But, um, cool color aside, these guys will never make it for more than a second in melee um, after being shot up like that. And then when they do get into melee with the Terrasos and realize the Terrasos are better, they'll probably still change their mind. Oh, he got one. He got two. Holy cow, that guy's a champ. Oh, now they're running away. Or no, is he trying to fight another one? I think he's trying to run away. Yeah, he's trying to run away. So, yeah, the uh, Takeda attempt at taking the walls here will be very quickly foiled. So all of their melee troops nearly beaten back in an instant. And then out here, uh, their general is approaching my cavalry. You know how it is when I rely on my units to actually fire. We'll see. They waited very late, but they did shoot and uh, managed to massacre that general. And as far as the other units out here, this is the Hero Katana Cavalry. This is the uh, Kiyamosa's Katana Cavalry. And then there's another Takeda general here. I believe this is their actual leader. I'm going to engage him with the Katana Cavalry because they are also Katana armed. Should be safe. And then I realized that the Katana Cavalry Hero is trying to assassinate my, my uh, leader. And I was like, oh boy. I realized it kind of at the last second, I was able to pull away. A few of his bodyguard members stay behind, which does kind of help me to get uh, my leader free and away as my Donderbuss cavalry then walk in and shoot up the hero cavalry very quickly. Again, this is the reason why hero units are not particularly useful, and it's because they are too small to have any great effect on the battlefield, despite their stats being absolutely disgusting. I think they would have been better suited to just be a full-sized unit, slightly less in stats. Something like the Great Guard Cavalry, for instance. Great Guard Cavalry can be quite useful in both campaign and sometimes even in, in multiplayer, too. However, these smaller hero units are much more difficult to make use of. But anyway, Kyoto stands. Well, Takeda are bold, I'll give them that, um, but they still don't have a good answer to my match locks, which absolutely murdered their force well before it could ever get into any type of effective combat, and even where they did get into combat, they were going to be Pretty well overmatched by some excellent Terrasos units. Um, so easily held on to our uh, new capital at Kyoto. Uh, we are being attacked by a sizable Takeda fleet, albeit not a fleet that's really capable of busting this blockade. But uh, I'll have to take care of this one. Uh, one more comment here before we go do that, though. Sanks says, in this episode, I expect more guns, more agent spam, more CA shenanigans especially more critical levels of assault. Oh, and some very audible frustration too. He says, edit, I was not disappointed. Great service as always. Well, you're welcome, thanks. Appreciate it. 
Um, and then uh, G Slide Video Tester said they're probably the inverse of stormtroopers, considering their accuracy. When I was mentioning that my uh, Terrasos were like stormtroopers, that's actually a pretty good point. <laughs> Let's go win this battle. All right, so another nice victory for us at sea. And cool thing here, we actually picked up some trade ships. I can send those back, repair them, and if I end up needing them before the end of the campaign, we can put them to use. Okay, here comes that Hanma force. They're going to attack me here, and um, I think if we use the same trick where I can get their bow samurai to climb the walls, we can probably easily win this one as well. So I'm going to attempt that. All right, so that same strategy worked well, and we have completed another victory here. It's quite the turn in there. We had a lot to do. Um, Lucas Wilk left a comment that was really good. Uh, he was mentioning whenever I said the suspicious death was my Pope-like missionary, and he says, no, Air, you're wrong. The suspicious death wasn't the Pope missionary guy. He was the one that got converted by the Takeda monk. He said, you know, staying in Japan for years, spreading Christianity, surviving prison and assassination attempts, but then the bald guy with the walking stick made some very convincing points. <laughs> Lucas, I like your reasoning way better than my own, and I buy it 100%. Thanks for the comment, that was great. Uh, we had an apprehension attempt, and yet another suspicious death. An assassination attempt, and we have mounting unrest, religious dissension, um, etsetsu. So, we're gonna see a lot of issues here, but I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm gonna stick this army in here to garrison. Um, there's no way they're gonna be able to overrun that garrison. It has far too many firearms, and we've seen the deadly effect of said firearms. Not to mention, they would also have to get through um, other units that I have there as well. So let's go see what the damage was in turns of agents. We need another missionary, or sorry, we need another ninja there. It says I can't hire a missionary, so it looks like it was a ninja that I lost. Let's see if we can get rid of this Metsuke. Got him. The uh, missionaries are obviously quite good at getting rid of enemy Metsuke. You have this enemy ninja. It's a low chance, but it's free, so I'll take a shot at him. Enemy agent was perplexed. Wow, we got lucky twice. So that is good news for us. He is out of the way, and then that just leaves this uh, ninja here. Was that my good ninja that they got rid of? It looks like it was probably my best ninja that they got rid of. Of course. Of course, I should have known. The one that's the least likely for them to succeed against is the one that they succeeded against. This game is always opposite land when it comes to the chances that you see and what you think will happen with agents. Just, like I said, bet on the opposite and you'll, generally speaking, be pretty pretty well set. Alright, let's see what we get here. Right, right there, our first guy had the highest chance. Watch this guy be the one that succeeds. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Oh, man. Good stuff. Um, so, here we go. Let's build... I built the encampment. Let's build the... Apple of Betsy Master Dojo. Oh, okay. So, we've already built the stables, because that's what this be Bejutsu Master Dojo is. So, we've got the Yari, the bow. So, we can recruit almost any type of melee and bow unit from here. Ooh, we can even get uh, Tarakatsu's Tetsubo Warriors. <laughs> That's a really fun unit. Um, I think we're going to recruit them uh, just because we can. So <laughs> let's grab them. Uh, we haven't had any Tetsubo unit. Spears of Shizugatake. So we have access to a whole bunch of really fun... Really fun units there. Um, income is fine. We beat back that invasion. Let's go over here to Shikoku. And take this settlement away from the Kono. Their army is trapped in the port. And they refused to fight me from a naval standpoint, and now their faction will be extincted. So, a decisive victory there. And that should be the end of the Kono. So now, my black ship fleet is free. And able to go wreak some appropriate havoc where necessary. So I'm going to start sailing it forward and out of here because it's no longer needed back here. This ship can go bust up this trade node. And I will take it to do so, but before I do, I think I'm going to repair these trade ships. Yep, just like that. Excellent. Um, so, we are set. 
couple more turns of owning Kyoto and we will achieve victory. I think I'm going to move forward toward Wakasa. This settlement is going to be pretty upset. I wonder though if Tajima will hold its own. Yep, they will. So I'll move my missionary up, see if we can try and stabilize Tango. I could just cut the taxes off and it would probably solve the issue. But um, I don't think there's any real reason to be all that worried about it at the moment. Get another victory here at Wakasa against what was the Oda Shogunate. I'm still calling them that because I haven't technically met the requisite number of turns. Peacefully occupy here. Let's check some of these generals. Repair. Got a merchant guild. Alright, let's get into this army and improve our general here. Still sphere and enemy units would be really nice. I think we've got to unlock all of these. I don't know if he has another skill point. If he does, we should be able to unlock that intimidating thing, which would be really cool. Um, let's take a look here. No one. Uh, yeah, we have a missionary here who increased in rank. Assaulter? Ooh, that sounds like something I need. Um, I mean, it's really right up my alley. Let's see, converting characters, converting provinces, and let's go and do converting characters. Alright, and one of these agents leveled up too. Okay, yeah, we've got another near Pope missionary here. Um, I'm gonna lower his chance of being assassinated because apparently that's a very real problem we seem to have. Getting hit by enemy agents who don't seem like they'll be able to kill us, but then they do. Alright, and then we have taken Awaji. Awa here is pretty safe. The Chozokabe still have a base at Tosa. And I think what I'm going to do is build a Sake Den here and then recruit some Ashigaru to help hold Awaji. And I'm going to recruit a couple here as well just to kind of help hold things together. At Io, we're going to repair the castle. I'm going to tear down the archery dojo and build a chapel instead. And up here, I'm going to take this army that just won that battle, and we're going to go hunt down the remnants of the Hanma. Though it says they're going to win, so whatever, just retreat and let them do their stupid thing. They'll get trapped, because we'll have extra units headed in this way, so we'll be able to get them soon enough. Um, so no need, to, no need to hurry that. That should be good enough for this turn as well. I'm going to end another turn. Let me get to some more comments that you all had here. This may be our final episode, folks. I hadn't thought of this as being as the final episode, but I guess we were just in that position. Um, let's see. Uh, Demon Notch... Uh, Demom... Man... Demon... Demom Men Chaos. Wow, that's quite the uh, mouthful for me to try and pronounce. Uh, it looks like our trade node's being attacked. I do have a Nanban ship here, and it should be more than capable of holding off uh, what we're being attacked by. So I'll have to fight this, but uh, anyway, uh, Demon... Demom Man Chaos says, uh, Dunderbus Cab dismounted and placed on the walls are beyond overpowered. Yeah, they're very good. Um, they are very good on the walls. If you can get a unit in range, they cause massive damage. So it's funny too how CA released that patch that removed the group chat feature from Shogun 2, but didn't fix the Tokugawa Hattori Kisho Ninjas, Arrow Cannon Sound Bug, and Broken Fleet Nuts. Yep, exactly. It was nice of them to patch out the chat room that wasn't hurting any of us, but uh, leave all of those bugs in what is otherwise a fantastic game. I, I admit that was pretty stupid. Let's fight this one. All right, I'm not sure how we lost a trade ship. Um, I never saw that happen, um, so whatever. That's kind of mysterious to me, but the enemy fleet was destroyed. We ended up capturing some units that I don't want, so I'll have to disband them on the beginning of the next turn. The Oda decided not to fight, but rather to run away and start raiding. That makes sense. That's, that's a typical AI decision there. And yeah, it looks like the Date are trying to agent spam me now. And they'll probably succeed. Let's be honest. Oh, no. Wow, look at that. Get your agent out of my face. <laughs> oh, the Date have some armies. Multiple armies moving up on Kyoto. We may get one last excellent battle. Uh, enemy Metsuke executed. Enemy raid. Mounting unrest. Okay. So we have mounting unrest at Tango. We can't seem to calm this province down quite enough. 
Uh, if I exempt them from tax, it certainly helps, but won't solve the issue. I thought that I had been recruiting here. I didn't, so I'll go ahead and throw a couple of units to recruit there. But in, in, until then, I'm going to kind of just stay at Wakasa here because it's going to limit the way the AI can move against me. What do they got here? A bunch of melee stuff, mostly. Warrior nuns, warrior monks. That's cool. They're bringing some neat units we haven't gotten to see a lot of yet. But again, I, they're, they're not going to be any match whatsoever um, for the capability of my troops uh, in either one of these. Having this much matchlock defense is going to be a big, big issue. Let's see, can we get rid of this Metsuke? Of course not. Um, can you get rid of this Metsuke? Of course not. Can you get rid of this Metsuke? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Who else can fail? Step right up, folks. Oh, there we go. The least likely one to have gotten rid of him is the one that gets rid of him, so our illogic holds true. When it comes to agent actions, this game makes no sense in that regard whatsoever. And look at that, almost no chance to sabotage, and we succeeded, so... <laughs> oh, CA, please, I love you. Um, exempt this province from tax. We can undo that soon. I'm going to take this army and start moving towards Tosa. We should be able to safely make that move. This army needs a transport fleet, actually. Because it's really no longer needed here at EO. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hop in here and just pull this army. It's gonna be wasted on Shikoku. Let's push it forward towards Kyoto. Our other goal of going after the trade route can obviously wait because it's just not important. Um, I really don't want these heavy bune. They're pretty worthless. I have other ships here that need to be repaired, but in the grander scheme of things, not very worried about it. Ports are still defended, despite one of them being by a glitched out fleet. I believe if we end one more turn, we're going to officially be the Shogun, and I don't think there is very much that can be done about it. I mean, the Date can attack me, and I would welcome it. It would be quite entertaining, actually, but um, it will fail nonetheless. Let's go uh, take a look at a few more comments, see if the Date attack or if they run away. They're just moving up more agents. At least the uh, Oda are. That's all the Oda are doing. Um, let's see, uh, Yidi Ye says, uh, taking top of our list as Master of Strategy. Master of Strategy is one of the most expansive overhaul mods you can get. It will drastically change your playthrough by adding a number of changes to make systems and typical battle mechanics even more complex than before. The mod features an extended map, tons of new units, buildings, battle stats, and completely, um, revamped tech tree. Okay, it looks like the Oda got past me at Tango. Yeah, okay, they went through... The Christian rebel province and just came and attacked my settlement. That's fine. If they take it, it'll hold their army still. Yeah, now their army's held still and they're going to get attacked. Actually, they left Tango already. Not really surprised. Not really surprised. Looks like they've sieged Kyoto and not attacked me. So, interesting play on their part there. I wonder if that prevents... I don't know if that prevents me from becoming Shogun if it's under siege. They will get reinforced by the Date, so there will be a large army, but of course I should be able to bring in some of my own... Oh wow, Wakasa had a massive rebellion here. Looks like some kind of Buddhist uh, rebellion. Um, don't really want to fight this because I want to fight the bigger battles. I'm going to quick save and then auto resolve. So it should be safe there. The Buddhist revolt. Uh, there's an insurrection. Province lost. Suspicious death. Of course we had a suspicious death. Mounting unrest. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. A million messages. Alright, so our missionary died up here. Unfortunate. Let's recruit a new one. And go through our habitual turn end character wars here. Wow, we are doing well this turn. Sometimes we get this, sometimes we don't. Wow, three for three. Excellent. 
Good stuff. Let's see. It's, uh, sabotaging buildings is actually pretty important, so a sabotaging army, so I'm gonna do that. We have a massive stack of enemies threatening us outside Kyoto, but I have reinforcements. Our reinforcements are fully ready to fight, um, so massive battle it is, and that would be a fitting way to uh, end the campaign. I believe this will give me reinforcements if my troops come out and attack the uh, Oda. Wow, the Oda Shogunate has two stacks here, and then the Date have two and a half. Um, no, we do not get reinforcements. So we do not get reinforcements of any sort. I think we can take them, though. Like, if I'm being honest, like, I'm pretty sure we can take these guys. Despite their numbers. I mean, maybe not. It's an interesting situation here at not getting reinforcements. Let's decline that attack for just a moment, and the siege prevents me from getting the reinforcement. I'm gonna quick save because I'm curious how. I don't know exactly how the um, reinforcement things work, so I I could attack this army here, and that may pull these two in as reinforcements. Then I I could then do as much damage to them as possible because I probably couldn't win against all this. I'm guessing there's no way for me to get my army as reinforcements here. These guys are not within striking distance, unfortunately. I'm gonna move back and take Tango just to kind of keep these guys on their heels. Oh no, they're gonna get their reinforcements here too. Um, continue the siege here then. Let's see if we can draw them into a fight. Well, so I have a couple options. I use my really good army and just try and fight my way through all of these guys, or I use this army to weaken up some of them first, and then try and fight through them. And I think that this looks like a good option for that. I'm gonna attack this Oda stack here. They actually won't get any reinforcements, so I can auto-resolve this. I didn't lose any troops, nor should I have. And then that will allow me now to attack these Oda reinforcements here. And that does allow me to get the forces from Kyoto as reinforcements, so now I can fight um, a very large battle here against our enemies, and this should be fun. They, they will be defending, and it's possible they'll go hill camp, but they will fail miserably with the number of guns that I have. So this, this should be a really nice way to finish up the campaign here with a huge ba uh, battle outside Kyoto. Um, I've got about 4,300 troops. And uh, they've got um, closer to 6,000 on the side of the uh, the Oda Date Alliance here. So let's let's fight this one. This is it, folks. The final battlefields outside of Kyoto. Will the Atomo Shogunate hold, or will its enemies push back? Um, this is going to push the Total War engine to its knees because this engine has never been good at handling this many characters. There's going to be about 8,000 unit models on the screen, and even though this is a 10-year-old game. The engine itself is a pretty limiting factor in uh, the performance of this game, so the uh, AI is going to make a suicide attempt at my matchlocks, and I'm going to block them. These are a couple of light cavalry units over here, I believe maybe one katana cavalry, yeah there is one katana cavalry. And then uh, they had some more uh, light cavalry trying to get behind me, I held them with my katana cav, and I have Ashigaru moving in. I basically have two armies here, the Date are approaching my right flank. And the Oda and all the reinforcements are going to approach my uh, my left flank. And my left flank is my weaker army. My right flank is my daimyo and the much stronger army that was reinforcing from Kyoto. So this initial cavalry action uh, will not go well uh, for the AI. They are going to be cut down rather summarily. And then uh, actually kind of intelligently here, the Oda decide to pull back with the rest of their stuff and meet up with the rest of their forces. And that's exactly what they should do. And the Date are moving forward. Uh, but this should time their attack to where they are attacking me at roughly the same time the Oda are. And this is going to be good because this is what's going to give the AI its best chance. And in order to make this fight more interesting, um, rather than trying to be like super cheesy, fire retreat, that kind of stuff, I, we're going all in. The Terrasos are going to fire and charge. The uh, melee infantry is going to charge. So we are outnumbered by quite a lot here. 
Uh, but we are still going to take them in a melee, despite initially shooting them with a gun line. So we will take them in old school Basido fashion after giving them a little dose of the modern world to get things started. All right, after a few minutes, uh, the enemy force was drawing closer. I took my Donderbuss cavalry because I realized there weren't all that many bows in the front of this uh, Oda formation. I wanted to uh, basically goad them into attacking me a little bit sooner than they probably want to because their reinforcements are near, but not quite here. So I want to, like I guess I kind of discombobulate their attack a little here. So they're going to get some shots off, but I'm going to get up here with my... Uh, my uh, Donderbuss Cavalry and open fire. So we're going to annihilate that Bo Ashigaru unit, and I'm going to fall back, and this does the trick. It gets the AI charging, and it's going to allow me a good opportunity to let my gun lion do some savage damage. And then uh, this also kind of triggers the Date, and the Date start marching forward. So now it is going to be a full-on attack from both armies at roughly the same time. Uh, this fight will get started slightly ahead of the other. So here come my Terrasos. I've given them double attack orders, which usually results in better, but you can see here that they still did a really poor job of shooting at the enemy. Something I just cannot seem to get over, but we will get shots off. Some of them even two volleys, but then I'm going to go ahead and charge into melee after they get their shots off. You can see this one should have fired already, but chose not to for some reason. Weird targeting mechanics. I'm going to back up with my Katana Samurai, so now I've got Terrasos and Katana Samurai, which are both Absolute beast in melee, but again, there's still a bunch of Oda reinforcements, and the Date are about to be here on scene too. Again, I've given double-click attack orders. My guys have a very clear line of sight, but they wait until very late to shoot. And uh, here comes the enemy melee troops. I took some shots at their bows to start with. I did get three line volleys off there. My Terrasos get caught out a little bit uh, ahead here, and they'll suffer some, but I've got a lot of melee troops heading to their aid. So the fight with the Date gets underway as well. And then this is the general with stand and fight. I'm going to start using his abilities. I've inspired um, one of my units that's firing. I believe it's this uh, Tersos up here. Yeah, look at their melee attack. This unit's an absolute beast. And then I've gone into stand and fight. These stats are absolutely insane. So we have a massive brawl ongoing. On this flank, I'm going to move some Matchlock Ashigaru. And I'm going to attempt to get these on the flank of the Oda. To try and, you know, do some damage, break their morale, whatever it is that I can do. Uh, it is a pretty brutal melee fight across the board because the enemy just outnumbers us by a lot. Like a couple of thousand. Um, so my men, although winning massively in terms of just, like, kills, uh, you know, we're struggling because it is a brutal fight. I did manage to get my uh, Donderbuss Cavalry up here. I figured that this bunch be a good target, but my, my Donderbuss Cavalry wouldn't really target it appropriately, even though this is a wide open flank. One of them shot into it, the other instead chose to shoot at this uh, Yate, or Date Yari Cavalry, which was a lot less than effective, so I had to back up because they were under heavy bow fire. Um, one of the flanks for the Date, though, is starting to collapse, and I'll be able to start to mop that up. However, the Oda, just by weight of numbers and this being my weaker army, are giving me a much stronger fight, plus I do not have stand and fight with this other army. So it is much more difficult. I do have a little more bow support on this side, though. And I am pouring in that bow support where I can. And I've even pulled back a couple of my Matchlock Ashi, uh, hoping to get some volleys as the enemy approached here. Whether or not I do is a whole different story. These guys aren't even reloading, but they're not firing either. So, yeah, there they decided to reload after they've been standing around for a second. So again, these units definitely working as intended. CA, please. Out here, I have gotten some more kills with my Matchlock Ashi. And my uh, Yari Ashigaru, though, have started to get beaten up. This uh, Yari Samurai was able to put one of them down. Again, these were not my uh, these were not my strongest Yari Ashigaru on this flank. Got to keep my general safe. Brutal battle, but it is going in my favor. My Donderbuss Cavalry getting some more kills here. They're being chased by Yari Sam, but I've got them on skirmish, so they won't get caught. And then at this point, I'm now engaging the bows. And these were the units getting the most kills for the Dates. Their melee force wasn't actually doing all that well. And it's because the stand and fight bonuses for my guys are massive. And the Date just cannot pull through uh, the melee fights here. So yeah, now with their bows getting cut down, they're in some real dog do. See some firebomb throwers here trying to get a few more kills against my Katana Samurai. But despite getting beaten down a lot, look at this, 172 kills on that Terrasos. This Katana Samurai had 116, 186 kills on that Terrasos. They got most of these kills in melee, too. 
to show you how impressive these units are. I don't know of any other matchlock unit that's going to be getting anywhere near that many kills in any given battle. And at this point, um, the, the enemy's progress has really been blunted. And again, despite early on them doing fairly well, getting all those kills with their bows, now that the Dante bows have been wrapped up, the enemy's really going to start falling behind. Their leaders are dead. I still have matchlock units putting shots into them. And uh, they are in big trouble. I, see, I even still have some cavalry a left for a little bit of maneuverability, so the uh, the Oda and their allies put up a beautiful fight here. It'll make for an epic ending to the campaign. I'm going to kind of like just scroll through here, let you see the battle lines that clashed. This epic final battle. And this is this should be basically the end of the campaign here, folks. And it, it is a fitting end. This is the kind of stuff I love in Total War. End it this way every time. All right, so a huge, albeit messy, victory for us. I kind of fought that one YOLO just because we're close to the end of the campaign. Hopefully I didn't screw anything over, but I mean, look at our Tersos, even standing and fighting. I mean, picking up massive numbers of kills. They were very deadly units and uh, did an excellent job for me. Even, and some of them didn't even fire properly here, but ended up in melee. Again, CA can't seem to fix the firing issues with matchlocks, but at least they got rid of that mean chat room. <laughs> At least they got rid of that mean chat room. I think that is the army that we, um, that we sabotaged. This army is absolutely reeling <laughs> from those effects. They they got into an ugly and brutal fight there. Uh, though our general did level up, which is good. Still can't get to stand and fight, which is ultimately what I want. So I'm gonna just leave his stuff alone uh, for now. We do have. Um, healing that we'll be taking on here, hopefully. Let's see, construction-wise, I did want to put a encampment here. I, I mean, I, I doubt it's really going to play much of a role at this point, but I'm going to put the encampment there nonetheless. Um, we've got the enemy sieged over here. They could attack us if they do. I feel confident we'll beat them. I'm not all that worried about it. And then I have, um, have more reinforcements that can unload in Setsu. So even should the worst happen and like the AI pops up, and they very well could because you know how the AI does that. Even if the AI pops up out of nowhere and eliminates us at um, Kyoto, I have another army nearby and then we have this one up here. So even if I've gone a little too far in my overzealousness, we should be okay. I'm going to push the Black Fleet forward here and kind of uh, discourage enemy fleets from moving forward. I don't really feel like fighting that right now, so I'm not going to take that fight. I do believe I'm going to end the turn, though, because this may be campaign victory for us. And I'll take a last look at some of the comments here. Oh, there's Tosa. He did have more troops just off screen. Doesn't look like they're moving to attack, though, because they haven't done it yet. They're going after my agents, and it looks like one of their monks failed. So that's good news for us. Um, let's see. Rocket says, uh, more DACA. Well, I hope you've had enough DACA in this campaign. It's been a really fun one. Another of their agents died in the attempt. Good. Uh, Ovid Ovidio says, will you play Age of Empires 4? Yeah, I love Age of Empires games. We'll definitely be trying Age of Empires 4. No question. <laughs> Illery says, more guns. Yes, you can't have enough guns in this type of campaign. That is absolutely the point. So the Oda did not attack me. The Date have that other army there. Will they siege Kyoto with it? Nope. They ran away. Uh, even if they, they had sieged Kyoto, it would have been difficult for them to win the battle against Kyoto. Um, being Shogun. Alright, we are the Shogun. Metsuke, province lost. Enemy Metsuke executed. Army crushed. Demoralized. Sabotage attempt. Monk executed. Maori gun rest. Okay. So we are... I believe we are the Shogun now. Yep, Otomo Shogunate. So we are the Shogun. And we got our specialty units um, that they give us here, which is the uh, Great Guard and some extra Yari Cavalry. I'll put this in here with these Tetsubo Monks just for just for fun. Those those units were just to add to our entertainment value. Um, our army is on the shores here and ready to take Kiwachi. So we are really ready to turn up the heat 
on the former Oda Shogunate. Peacefully occupy. I'm trying to remember what the, uh, let's see, land management. Victory conditions. Did we, oh, well, it says the victory conditions are 40 provinces. Um, I'm, I don't feel like we need to get 40 provinces. This is just going to be a map wipe at this point. <laughs> We're, we're clearly the Shogun. No one can stand against us. I must have done, like, long victory or something instead of the short victory. But yeah, I, I, 40, 40 provinces means I have to capture 12 more, so it'd be, like, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... I mean, 11, 12, I mean, we would be, like, just wiping forward a whole bunch more of the map for no real good reason. I mean, look at this. Here we go. Chozokabe are extinct. I'm in control of Shikoku entirely. So Shikoku is mine. Kyushu is mine. Most of Honshu is mine. Uh, we are, we wouldn't be stopped at this point. Um, so could there be more fighting? Yes, but I think it's a good point to end this campaign. We've gained the Shogunate. We've become the Shogun. Our armies proved superior. We had a lot of fun with different matchlock units. Um, I, I just feel like overall this campaign has been a fantastically fun success. And I really hope you all enjoyed it as well. I had a lot of fun playing it. But uh, the reason I don't want to waste time map wiping is because I want to move on to another historical Total War game. Because I'm going to have at least one historical Total War campaign going on at all times on my channel from here on out. And so I feel like we had our fun here. And it was good fun, and I'm going to be moving on to the next title now, which is probably going to be Rome 2. Um, I'm thinking of kind of some fun uh, sandbox kind of rewrite history type campaigns that we can do in Rome 2. And we'll go revisit that one. I have to say, in my revisit of Shogun 2, I thoroughly enjoyed it. There are still some bugs in the game, as you all saw. Uh, bugs that are really quite annoying, and I wish would have been fixed. They were not. Is the game still playable? Absolutely. And it's still super fun. Like, if this game's on sale, and you want to pick it up, I don't think you'll go wrong. It doesn't take a whole ton of really high-end hardware in today's world to run it, because it's 10 years old now. It still looks fantastic. It plays fantastic, despite its little quirks. And I think this one is a classic Total War game for sure, in the sense that I can sit here and play it and record it 10 years later and have a good time doing it. I do hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, this is actually my second Otomo campaign. <laughs> So this is a Tomo 2021, and I would say that this one was a fun success. Anyway, thank you all for following and watching Air of Carthage signing out from the Atomo campaign. And I will see you soon in the next historical Total War campaign. We'll have some fun there.